Hailing from Croatia, the Vorhan Ski and his team over at Crow Team wanted to delve into the video game world by creating their own title and game engine. Formerly in the works being known as In the Flesh, the game was designed to run similarly to a Quake or Doom title, including dungeon-based environments and medieval enemies. However, over the course of several years, from 96 to the year 2000, a title and character will stick out from the rest, one being Serious Sam, a parody character to rival the likes of Doom Guy, Quake Guy and Duke Nukem. A copy of the first test demo that I personally acquired on the Internet Archive is in my opinion, and as far as I know, the earliest version of the first IP that I could find, years before it became the infamous Serious Sam the First Encounter, which personally, I really enjoy and love to this day. So I thought I'd give it a go, sit here and play the test evaluation demo that I don't think was made public, but is a official Crow Team build of the very first Serious Sam game. And there's a bunch of things in here that I want to talk about in terms of what's different from this version to the full release. So without further ado, let's just dive straight in. This marks the first time that you kill a beheaded Syrian with any weapon, let alone stealthily with a knife. Now, usually in the Serious Sam games, whenever you are involved in a room full of enemies, they are instantly aggro to you, rather than you just being there stealthily ready to take the kill from behind. So. Crow Team at the beginning had this feature for quite a while um, during a few of the levels that I played. Um, the first level you are seeing right now is the level of Fever, um, which I believe is also the same. Uh, it's not the intro level to Serious Sam First Encounter, but it's one of the first levels in that game. Um, but you can see from the environments, it was a very colourful, bright experience set in Egypt. Um, and it really had a stark contrast between some of the games you see like Doom or Duke Nukem. Um, where it's like more dull and more like end of the world. Serious Sam takes like a more f laid back approach. Um, a comment that I will steal from Framerator, who this video is loosely based off of because he made a brilliant review of this uh, this build, and I thought I'd do the same. Um, he mentioned how it looks very like Californian surfer boy esque, and I can really understand that because some of the things in this are just some some of the things are beautiful, they're sublime. Um, but I'm going to quickly talk you through the. the the enemy, enemy models compared to the full release. Um, you may notice already that the beheaded uh, Syrians look a bit different. Um, and forgive me if I'm calling them Syrians. I think they're Syrians or they're Imperians, something like that. This game has a lot of context that I don't really understand, but um, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, so I've completely, completely gone off script. I did, did want to write a whole script for this, but I just couldn't bother because I'm not that very good at script uh, writing, so I'm just going to do it all legit. And how I was reacting at the time because I had my microphone turned off during the play session. But um, the beheaded enemy models, um, you see that they hold the head in their hands compared to in the original game where they just don't have a head. Um, or if they do, it's like positioned with a spike there. So it's sort of hanging off. You'll see it with one of the uh, enemies that I'll put on the screen right now where you can see him holding the beheaded hand, but you, uh, head, but you can see the, the pole going through the head. Um, so I think... In the later builds, Crow Team changed it, so it'd just be the head hangs off the pi uh, the the pole spike, sorry, um, just a bit on the edge, so it still looks beheaded. So I think that was a pretty cool touch. Um, one enemy that really surprised me was the clear. Um, if you don't know what the clear is, I'll put a picture of it on the screen right now. It is a medieval bone horse, um, as one of the game reviewers called it from years ago. Um, one of the most infamous, infamously annoying but iconic enemies in Serious Sam um, in any version of the game to be exact, um, especially in Serious Sam 3 which I just finished um, I did not like the clears at all but uh, you see in the picture that they're very like greyish, uh, almost black uh, colour wise and then in this build it's like they still have the same bone uh, structure with design it's just a golden reskin I think the gold really plays well um, with the look, but I think just because of the environments and it being in Egypt, it might have blended in too much to the sand. Because, as you'll see as well, the levels are quite like the, the arenas are quite large. Um, so it's like a large open space with enemies just scattered around all over the place. So you can just immediately take them out, kill them, and move on. Um, one other thing as well, it's kind of a off-topic thing towards the enemies, but um, only having one cult to start with in a serious sam game felt really weird. Um, I don't know if it was in the original Serious Sam 1, because I haven't played that version. I played the Revolution, which kind of like changed a few things. Um, you could have two cults from the get-go, um, and you 
uh, couldn't reload with them, so you just infinitely shot, just constantly. Um, but in this build, you have to reload the Colt, and you only get one to start with. I do pick one up later on in, into the session, so there's a there's that. Um, but we're gonna just skip a few bits here, um, trim some of the gameplay out, because it's all just the same as any standard serious Sam game. You go into one place, kill some enemies, find a switch, go to the next place, do the same thing. But I'm gonna skip you forward to this area in particular, um, if I'm not already there, where it looked absolutely beautiful with this gorgeous lens flare um, and just the the level design for the first level crazy um, and it also features a lot of enemies that are iconic to the series um, I did not pick up on the kamikazes I don't know if they're in this build I might have to play it a bit more to figure it out but I did not see a kamikaze in my build um, in my session because I only played for like half an hour and it was like not even that far into the game um, but one other enemy that really stood out is the Gunars. Now the Gunars are really easy, just fodder enemy. Um, if you see them, you just look easy. Either like, you can knife them, you can shotgun blast them, you can do anything with them. Like they're, they're really weak. They're one of the first enemies you'll see in the game along with the beheaded Syrians. Um, now there was a big theory going around during the series Sam uh, 3, 4 and just the series in general of the idea of how come the Gunars can just fly in some games and the others can't um, and Framerator also made a good point about this um, I'll leave a link to his video and the, and uh, his channel in the, in the, uh, in the description um, I have received and sent comments to him so he's one of my personal favourite uh, reviewers on YouTube so I definitely uh, don't want to sugarcoat anything and say I'm stealing his content I'm not I just was really interested interested in the build and I wanted to give my, my own thoughts um, but the, the Gnars um, he mentioned there was a feature in this build specifically that I have I have seen, and if I'm at that point, I will show you, where uh, the Gnars fly, and then when they want to come back to the ground, they like open their limbs up, so that it's kind of like how turtles were like ducking their shells. It's kind of what they do here with the uh, Gnar body parts, where they just like hide in a spot and then just sit still. If that makes sense, and, and fly around. I think that was really cool. Um, so I think that was a really nice touch. I think that should have been a thing in the original series sam one because now it just looks like they, they fly just randomly there's no explanation for it so i think it kind of makes sense to the whole whole idea of it um and i might make a controversial topic here uh, of discussion but when it comes to enemy jibs if you, don't, if you don't know what that is basically when you kill an enemy it's like uh gore and graphic like details fly out of uh, fly off the screen um for your enemy so if i were to kill say uh, beheaded soldier in serious i'm free which i uh, played not long ago and finished um like they just explode like the body parts explode and scatter all over the floor i don't think i'm a big fan of that like sometimes it's funny but then it's like it's not really realistic as much like it, it's hard to explain but in this build i don't think it does it um so if you just kill an enemy they just fall to the floor and like disintegrate i think that's a really cool touch um definitely should have been like a staple in all the serious sam games but then serious sam is uh as times evolved the the first person shooter uh, genre has, has evolved so i can see why that's a thing um but that's just, that's just a little nitpick of mine um I, i'm trying to like keep a concise report on this here because the, the build for me was just amazing i liked every aspect of it the only thing that is is really annoying for me and you'll see it in the gameplay constantly is i had to remap all my keybinds um to like move left right and whatnot and I don't know if it was my keybinds or just the game like being like unstable sometimes, but the way I tried to turn left and right was not consistent at all. Like sometimes I'll like press A to go left. I won't go left. I'll look left. That makes sense. Um, so I had to figure that out really hard at times, but got there in the end. Um, and ultimately, I just wanted to give my final thoughts on the the alpha and say that I generally want to play play like a full version of this build. Like I know this is an alpha version of a game that's already out. And it's way, way, like, early in development. And probably the source material and the content is not even there. Like, I'm sure there's a port of it on, like, a Serious Sam 1 mod with this specific build. I'm sure there is. Um, there is a next encounter build that I want to play for the channel at some point for Serious Sam 1. I think that'd be really cool. Because um, I love the next encounter. It's one of my favorite Serious Sam games. I want to finish that game. I might do a series on that, but that's fun of a discussion. Um, but ultimately, the the fact stands that crew team knew what they were doing from the get-go and serious sam as a franchise had a great lead from this point it was a really good uh 
fresh take on the FPS genre, um, especially considering their budget, um, being a small Croatian team in a very competitive market like the FPS genre and console game and all this, like PC stuff, must have been really difficult. But Crow team, they smashed it out of the park. Now they've got gone into some many series, some mainline titles and side, uh, like spin off games and whatnot. But I'm on the series Sam Marathon. Um, and I have one game left in the Canon series, uh, I believe, which is Serious Sam 4. So that's going to be uh, quite a mission for me to get through. But I just wanted to give some thoughts on the, the Alpha. I know I haven't really been talking like at the Alpha that much, but I just wanted to explore it, do like a little revisiting kind of, even though I haven't played the build before. But I wanted to get some some po uh, some thoughts on the Alpha build of the game because um, I'm just a big Serious Sam fan at this point. I'm just trying to get through all my Serious Sam fixes including finishing all the mainline games, uh, doing all the reviews, the tier lists. Um, I've got a Serious Sam 2 enemy tier list coming soon, so watch out for that. But thank you everyone for listening. Um, Serious Sam for life, and I'll see you in a bit.